Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. I'm Dr. Morris. Today what we're going to be doing is calculating the pH of a weak acid. And you'll see that this is an equilibrium calculation. We're going to have to use an ice table, stuff like that. So if you haven't used ice tables before, you can review a video I'll link to below on ice tables. If you're just calculating the pH of a strong acid or base, you don't need to go through all this mess. It's much easier than this, and you can check out the other video I'll link to below on calculating the pH of a strong acid. Why is there a difference between strong and weak acids? Well, a strong acid is one that completely dissociates. And so, for example, with HCl, when I mix it into water, I get H3O+, plus, that's the hydronium ion, plus my chloride ion is left behind. On the other hand, if I take my weak acid, HF, I have to use forward-backwards arrows, and I still get H3O+, plus, plus F-, minus, but not all of my HF goes forward and is dissociated. So if I put in 1,000 HCl's, I'll get out 1,000 H3O+. Pluses. All of it splits apart. If I put in a thousand HFs, maybe I'll only get out 500 H3O pluses. And that's what makes it a weak acid. It doesn't completely dissociate. It doesn't always split up. And that changes how we have to do our math. Let's go ahead and look now at an equilibrium constant for acids. And it's the same as the equilibrium constants that we've seen before. And this is critical for calculating the pH. So here we have just a generic acid, HA. So A could be anything. A might stand for anything. And you mix HA with water and you get H3O plus and A minus. So whatever happen, whatever acid you happen to have is linked up with your A. And then when you put it in water, the H drifts off and so does the A. And that's why we get this generic equation. We can write an equilibrium constant for it. And it's the same as equilibrium constants you've been seeing before. This stuff up here is my products. And this stuff up there is your reactants and we dropped water because it was a liquid, and we just add this A to remind you that it's foreign acid. But think about what this means. My hydronium ion concentration goes up if Ka goes up. So a big Ka means a strong acid, or I should say there's more hydrogen ions in solution. A small Ka will mean a weaker acid. So the bigger your Ka is, the more dissociation is happening. The smaller, the less dissociation is happening. This is really important when we go to calculate pH because our pH depends on how much of this stuff is around. And the more of it dissociates, that means we're going to get more hydronium ions in solution and hence a lower pH. The less of it that dissociates, that means we'll get less hydronium ions and a higher pH. Let's take a look at a calculation that uses these sorts of equilibrium constants. So here we have 0.5 molar propionic acid. And we combine our propionic acid with water, we get hydronium ions and our, uh, our conjugate base, the leftover um, ion there. And it also gives us an equilibrium constant, 10 to the minus fifth. That means that we don't have a ton of products, and that means this is definitely a weak acid. So what we have to do with a weak acid is fill in our ice table, and then we're going to write an expression for our K. We're going to fill in that expression with a bunch of equations. We're gonna solve for x and that's gonna allow us to calculate pH. So that's a lot and we'll go slow one step at a time. So first, our ice table. We know here our initial concentration of propionic acid which is represented by that guy, HA, that's both of them together. So we put 0 0.5 molar. Our hydronium ion concentration starts at basically zero. Strictly speaking, this is actually not quite true. There's a little bit of hydronium ions around in water, even if you haven't added an acid. Uh, but most of the time, you can neglect that, unless your concentration here is really low, like smaller than 10 to the minus 6. But in most cases, you can start with just zero. Same with our A minus. We don't have any at the beginning of dissolving it in water. And then what's going to happen? Well, this is going to drop by x, and this is going to go up by x, and this is going to go up by x. There's a 1 in front of all of these guys, which means we just have minus 1x, plus 1x, and plus 1x. So at equilibrium, we add the initial to the chain, so we get 0.5 minus x to determine the equilibrium concentration there. 0 plus x just gives us x, and 0 plus x just gives us x there. So that's our ice table. It looks just like equilibrium calculations you have done before. And then after we fill in our ice table, we're going to write k. Ka, in this case, remember, just like the procedure for writing K, it doesn't really matter that there's an A there, it's just telling you, hey, this is for an acid. But it's the same sort of variable. So products up top, which means H3O plus times C2H5CO2 minus, all divided by just our C2H5CO2H. 
We don't have water because water is a liquid. And now we're going to plug in our equations that we just got to down here for equilibrium. So at equilibrium, we're going to get x for our hydronium concentration, we're going to get x for our A minus concentration, and we're going to get 0 0.5 minus x for our propionic acid concentration. And that's all equal to our Ka, which is this guy. So let's go to the next slide where I'll have that written out and we can start working on the algebra. So here's our equation from the previous page. We know we have x squared up top, 0 0.5 minus x on the bottom. This is our Ka value just plugged in. And now we're going to solve for x. We're going to need to do that using the quadratic equation. And so our first step is to get x, or the whole equation, equal to 0. We're going to start by multiplying both sides by 0 0.5 minus x. And when we do that, what we're going to get on the left-hand side is... 0 0.67 times 10 to the minus 5 x, or I'm sorry, just without x for the first time, and then minus 0 0.67 times 10 to the minus 5, now there's an x, is equal to x squared. So all we got to do, last step to get it all equal to 0, is subtract x squared from both sides, and what that's going to give us then is 0 on this side, and on this other side, we're just going to have a minus x squared term. Now, this is going to be our value for the a constant. And this is going to be the value for b. And this is going to be the value for c. And we're just going to plug that in to our quadratic equation. So x is going to be equal to negative b, which is 0 0.67 times 10 to the minus 5, plus or minus square root b squared, which is 0 0.67 times 10 to the minus 5 squared, there's technically a negative sign in there, but it'll go away when we square it, minus 4 times a, which is negative 1, times c, which is once again our 0 0.67 times 10 to the minus 5. And that's a positive term there. All over 2a, which is going to be 2 times our negative 1 which is the value for a. When we plug that in, we're going to get two values for x. We're going to get 0 0.052 or negative 0 0.052. But we're going to take the positive value because this is going to represent concentration, and we can't possibly have a negative concentration. So our x is equal to 0 0.052, and now we're almost done. Since we know what x is, right, we know what our hydronium ion concentration is. Remember that our concentration for hydronium ions is equal to x. So in this case, that's equal to 0 0.052 molar. And if I want the pH, well, all I gotta do is plug it into my pH equation, which tells me that pH is equal to negative log of 0 0.052. And now I have my pH of solution, which is 1.28 molar. I'm sorry, not molar, pH is unilist. 1.28. So there, I got the pH for a weak acid. Remember, I had to use an equilibrium calculation here because not all of my propionic acid dissociated. In fact, look at the initial concentration, 0.5 molar. And the concentration of my, uh, of my hydronium ions is 0.052. So only about 10% of that acid actually dissociated. And that's why the pH is not as low as it would be if propionic acid were a strong acid that completely dissociated. So when you have a weak acid or a weak base, you have to use your Ka value to determine how much of your hydronium ions you're going to have around at equilibrium. Thank you for watching this episode of Real Chemistry. If you have any questions, ask them below. You can always subscribe by clicking on the banner down there. Thanks for watching.